Hello and welcome to a new video. I hope that you're having an amazing day. And in this video, I am painting three watercolor ice lollies. Let's get into it. I start out by drawing a pencil outline as a guide. I start by drawing a horizontal line for the base of the ice lolly, and this will be how wide it will be. Then I draw a vertical line in the center. Then on one side, I draw a vertical line curving from the top of the center line, continuing the line to the base. Then using the center line, I mirror how much to curve the left side to match the right side. Once I have the overall shape, I draw the ice lolly stick at the center, about a finger's width with a curved end. Then I draw three horizontal lines of the same length at the bottom. Then starting with the middle line, at both ends I draw two vertical lines that are slowly curving inwards. I do the same with the other two horizontal lines, but curving the vertical line so that it follows the curve of the overall ice lolly outline. And these lines mark the guide for the iconic ice lolly design. The next ice lolly is the twisting one. I start by drawing a horizontal line for the base of the ice lolly. At both ends, I draw straight vertical lines, and then I draw a slightly curved horizontal line for the top. Starting on the left, I draw a line that curves downwards, like you can see me do. Then as I go downwards, I continue making lines that are parallel to that first curved line, keeping the lines evenly spaced from each other. These are the lines in between each twisting layer. Along the right and left side, I connect the lines that are right next to each other with a slightly curved line. Then once that is done, I rubbed out the guiding vertical lines from the start. Then I drew the ice lolly stick at the center at the base of the ice lolly. For the third ice lolly, I drew the horizontal line for the base like before. I drew the center vertical line as a guide. From the base horizontal line at both ends, I draw straight vertical lines roughly three quarters of the ice lolly's length, not including its stick. Then for the very top, it is a curved line. I use the center guide line to help make this curve even for both sides with the same gradient. I also decided to have a bite mark in this one. So to do this, I drew a curve, keeping it quite circular in the corner of the, at the top of the ice lolly. Then along the curve inside the ice lolly, I drew small semicircles to suggest the teeth bite marks. Then you can rub out the center guide line and initial guiding curve line for the bite mark. A little above the first bite mark, I drew a second one following the same curve to show the edge on the other side of the ice lolly. Then I used wavy lines to divide the third ice lolly into three even sections. Now we can begin the painting part. So to paint the middle ice lolly as a watermelon, I use clean water to paint over the entire ice lolly, not including the stick as I will paint this separately. I add my red watercolour at the top, making the top two thirds of it red. I suggest that you only add red paint for the top half as the red paint will slowly move downwards as the surface is wet. Then for the bottom I add my light green and then a little bit at the very bottom I add a dark green for the watermelon rind. To avoid the red mixing with the green you can clean your brush dry it and soak up the red paint next to the light green. I do have a watermelon tutorial so if you want to check it out you can find it in this video's information card. Just before I move on don't forget to like and subscribe for weekly watercolour and drawing videos. So for the right ice lolly 
To paint the sprinkles, I simply paint short lines, turned at different angles to make it look random, and I painted them in three colors, having them more or less evenly distributed. Then I painted the second third with a pink. For this, I wanted it to be a flat wash. If you want it to be a flat wash too, then I advise you to pre-wet the section first with clean water, and then you can add your paint evenly around the section. I didn't pre-wet it and simply went straight in with a wet brush with paint, and this made it dry unevenly, which meant that I had to do several layers on top once it was dry, pre-wetting it this time, to disguise the patchy blob in the middle a little bit. I painted in the inside of the ice lolly where the bite mark is and then I painted the ice lolly sticks. I didn't paint the middle ice lolly stick as the ice lolly itself was still wet and I don't want the colours to bleed into each other. I painted the ice lolly sticks with a brown. I suggest that you go a little lighter than I have and possibly mixing it with a little yellow as I've gone quite dark with mine which isn't the traditional ice lolly look but to be honest I was a little clumsy when painting the ice lolly sticks. For the left twisting ice lolly, I picked three colours and painting one colour at a time to paint each section in. You can use any colour you like with all of these ice lollies. I went with a simple repeating gradient of warm colours since I hardly use these warm colours when painting, so I gave them a time to shine in this one. For the last section of the right ice lolly. I did pre-wet the area first before adding my paint and decidedly made it patchy to make it to make the second third look a little more deliberate. I also painted a second layer for the middle watermelon ice lolly as I wanted it to be more vibrant. Once this second layer was dry, using the lines in the middle, where you have three pairs of vertical lines to suggest the slight dips on the ice lolly surface. For the left side of each pair, I painted a thin line, a thin red line on top of the red section, and then a thin green line in the green section. I did the same for the right side, but this time the right vertical line of each pair is slightly thicker and this is the same for when it curves round to a vertical line at the bottom. This is to try and suggest the shadows from where the surface of the ice lolly dips inwards slightly. I also added a thin dark green line for the very bottom to suggest shadows at the base. For the ice lolly stick I added the thin jaggedy vertical line to suggest the woods texture. Once the watermelon ice lolly was completely dry, I painted in the black seeds, which are a teardrop shape, and I added them randomly on top of the red section of the watermelon. Once everything was completely dry, using a black waterproof pen, I drew the outline outside the ice lolly and around the ice lolly stick, and then it's done. Thank you so much for watching this video, I hope that you had fun painting this. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you like this video and want to see more, then you can check out my watercolour playlist for more beginner ideas. And as always, God bless and I'll see you later.